This right here is the Max Free K3. It's a foldable touchscreen mechanical gaming keyboard. What the fuck? A foldable touchscreen sounds cool. A mechanical gaming keyboard also sounds cool. A foldable touchscreen mechanical gaming keyboard sounds wrong? I, I don't know. Let's go ahead and open this bad boy up. First impressions is, man, this thing actually seems quite premium. Got a little leather piece here. Wow, <laughs> look at that. It's got some nice uh, weight to it. It's pretty thick. Honestly, it just feels like the bottom portion of a laptop. We'll check this out in one second, but first let's see what's included inside. We of course have some literature, comes with some different adapters, of course with the key puller, which is always a nice little addition. This one's kind of fancy. It's got uh, the normal puller that you would see, but also this like tong looking one, which is kind of cool. All right, so we're gonna press to adjust and let's see how many different options we have. So this one wouldn't be usable in my opinion because it's quite literally like almost 90 degrees to the keyboard. The next setting, let's see where it locks, right here. Huh, okay, makes sense. And that's it. So there's flat like that, all the way in 90 degrees and then sort of an in-between like 45. And then the sleeve just slides off. So it locks here. I feel like it locks here, but okay. I guess you have to be extremely gentle touching this thing. Okay, so this, this button thing isn't that good. It can be disengaged pretty easily, but there we go. I'm not gonna touch it anymore. Up here though, we have all our different uh, inputs and things like that. Speakers off to the side, the angle lock button down at the bottom left. And what's actually crazy is if I open this back up, down over here, you can install an M.2 drive. So, wow. Now let's check out the keyboard. Oh, oh, baby. Sounds so good. By the way, the screen is 13 inches. The resolution is 1920 by 720, and it is an IPS 60 Hertz display. Uh, as far as the switches on the keyboard, they're yellow, and it sounds so good. So there we go, yellow switches, very cool. I'm not always a huge fan of keyboards like this, specifically the bottom right portion. Uh, to fit these arrow keys, they had to go and squeeze these three keys, the shift button's a little off. So it's not my favorite, but for this use case, it could actually be pretty cool. The big thing to me is trying to understand the use case here, right? So if you want to travel with this, this thing is probably heavier than your laptop, depending on what you use. And with that, it's also just pretty thick. So traveling with this and a laptop would kind of be a pain in the ass, in my opinion. Now, if you want this for your setup, I can see that being pretty cool because you can have Discord down here, you know, you might have some neck problems after a few weeks, but uh, this would be nice for simple, quick to look at apps like Spotify, Discord, maybe your email, uh, if you're using Slack, things like that. However, beyond that, I don't really see how you would use this, why it would be so beneficial. Um, it is cool that it is touchscreen, so maybe if you're using OBS or something similar, you wanna be able to just do things on the fly while you're streaming. Uh, it actually would be pretty cool for streaming. However, you're married to this keyboard. If you're a streamer, you probably already have a keyboard that you love and you wouldn't give up on using it just to have a 13 inch touchscreen. So that right there is kind of a flaw. You can buy a screen like this. It may not always be touchscreen, but you can always buy something similar and have it mounted right in front of your keyboard. But they also make other things like the stream deck and the loop deck and so on. You could even have an iPad, you know? So this use case starts to get a little more like, huh, who would actually need this? By all means, let me know in the comments down below if you can think of a use case that makes a lot of sense for this specifically. This isn't me dissing the product, right? I haven't even plugged it in yet. And I can tell you that it does feel like it's made of high quality material. However, this right now is listed at $450 on Amazon. Granted, it's on sale for $300 and it's probably always on sale, maybe, you know, give or take 20, 30 bucks, but still, at $300? No thank you. Keyboards can be expensive, screens can be expensive, but again, I'd rather spend the money and get a keyboard that works for me, and it's something that I thoroughly enjoy, separate of the fact that it is now glued to a screen. But what if something was to happen to the keyboard? And you can't use the keyboard, so now you lose access to the screen, or vice versa. Something happens, you crack it or something goes wrong, you spill something on it, the screen no longer works. Okay, so let's stop wasting time talking and actually plug this thing in and see how the screen looks. Right here, it also has different cable clips that you can use uh, to keep things nice and neat, which is actually a pretty cool feature. One thing I really like is that they have two options for the kickstand. So they have this really, really long piece here, and then they have one in between. So depending on what angle you'd like to use, 
you can choose between them. So first problem is that this USB-A to USB-C cable is very short. And then for the actual display portion, uh, we have a nice right angled USB-C cable. Definitely a fan of that. They do want you to plug the right angle bit into the actual product and not into your computer. Also, the problem with the right angle is if I go this way, I'm gonna cover the SD card slot. And if I go this way, I'm gonna cover the USB-A port. So yeah, not really crazy about that. That's really interesting. I thought I would have to provide extra power for this to work, but uh, just one USB-C cable from this into my MacBook Pro. And uh, it might be hard to see, but the screen is there, it's on. The keyboard's all lit up, okay. So I've just been playing with it for a few minutes and I know right now you guys can't really see the screen because I have it tilted at me, but uh, huh, I don't really know how to feel. I don't hate it, but I also don't love it. I feel like the screen is really, really dim. So I'm going to figure out how to make it brighter, which hopefully it does that. Oh, here we go. Wow, okay, that's, doesn't get very bright. I'm gonna be honest. Average brightness is 300. I don't know what that means. <laughs> It's also kind of annoying to pull the screen up. If I push in the button here, I really have to get lucky with the grip in order to activate it. But yeah, it's been another few minutes and uh, huh, even with the brightness all the way up, it's really not that bright. And I know it won't show that well on camera, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, but even with the studio lights off, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's bright, but it's not as bright as you would expect. So that's annoying. Plus if I am a streamer and I want to use this, I'm going to have lights like this on and I want to be able to see what the hell I'm doing. It could definitely be brighter. Now, uh, with that said, I will say it is also kind of difficult to lift the screen up. I mean, it's not the end of the world. I'm not here to complain about every little detail, but if I press in the button, there's really no safe spot to grab it from. You try the corner, but you don't always get it on the first try. So it feels a little bit awkward. I need more time before I can be judged by a typing test, but uh, I do like it. I will say the keyboard itself is pretty nice and it does have a lot of different options here so I can control the sound um, and I could also start playing things and pause playing things as well. And of course you have all these different features here and we can toggle between Windows and Mac. So it is compatible with both, which is always pretty cool. I don't really have a lot to say as far as the keyboard goes. I don't see myself wanting to use it exclusively because of the keyboard. I think that if you are actually buying this, you are buying it specifically because it's got a big old screen attached to it that is also touch compatible, which speaking of the touch is, you know, exactly as you would expect. Uh, this would be nice if you're playing Gartic phone with friends, you know, huh? but uh, truthfully, I don't think that there's many use cases where you're not gonna be utilizing the touch feature because that's the whole convenience of it. If you're playing Spotify, boom, I don't need to use my mouse or anything. I don't need to drag it down. I can just press on what I want, bada bing, bada boom. The truth is I'm not gonna sit here and use it for two weeks and give you a full detailed review. I'm just not interested in this product as much as I had hoped. At the end of the day, for $300, not even the full 450, at $300, this is only going to apply to certain people. I do think it's cool. I do think for the right person, this is going to be a killer addition to your setup, but it doesn't apply to a lot of people. It's, it's fairly niche. With so many other little accessories available nowadays, this is kind of a, a bold move, you know? Getting a two-in-one sort of solution is uh, kind of crazy. I don't think it's bad. I think it has some cool things, like for instance, the M.2, although completely random, seems like a cool addition. I do think the build quality is pretty damn nice with these uh, LEDs here. The keyboard's really high quality. Honestly, even the screen's good. I do think that this button to lock things is fairly mediocre. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, it's actually just not great. Uh, it needs to be a little more firm and really lock in. I shouldn't be able to push it when it's locked, you know? kind of defeats the purpose. So, but I stick by my original statement that this feels like if you had a big thick laptop and only had the bottom half of it. <laughs> That's literally what this is. I could not think of a better way to describe it. But that said, it is good quality. I do like that they give you this little piece here to cover it for when you're traveling. But again, do you see yourself traveling with this thing? Cause I sure don't. It's crazy cause I don't have friends. And for some reason now I get a text, okay, you know, you could stop. Anyways, shout out to Max Free for sending this over. I hope you don't think that I'm just here ripping apart your product. I'm actually being fair. <laughs> a lot of YouTubers are just gonna sit here and tell you, oh my God, this thing's got a screen. It's got the keyboard, it's all attached. Like I I'm not gonna just sit here and tell you it's the best thing since sliced bread. There's of course pros, but always cons as well. With that said, don't forget I'm at Philly and you're not. Get out of my face, have a great day, and I'll catch you on the flippity flop.
Thank you for watching Swashing on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed watching. If not, then fuck you. Please hit subscribe because my channel is dead. Jesus Christ, man, that's just really sad.